In this video, I'm going to go over setting preferences on the Universal Dash. This how-to video has the same screens and menu options as all of our DirectFit Envision Dashes. Stay tuned to learn more about your Envision Dash and all of its capabilities. With our Universal or any of our DirectFit Envision Dashes, the screen is operated with a joystick which is connected to the screen. The joystick will allow you to make changes to your settings. To bring up the menu, you will need to push firmly down on the joystick. From here, you can scroll through the list by either turning the knob to the left to scroll up or to the right to scroll down. If you see the settings highlighted, select it by pushing down on the joystick. We're going to start off by changing the screen display. You'll want to start by clicking the display and then you go down to display one. And that'll change it to this. And then hit the joystick again, hit display. Oops, I went down too far. Go back to display. And then you can go to three. And then this one, you're able to change it to different colors. Hit display three again. And this will go to gray, blue, red, green, purple, yellow, and orange. One of the nice things about the Envision Dash is that you can change the units for the speedometer, water temperature, and oil pressure to either imperial or metric. So you'll have to click on the joystick, hit units, and this is where you can change the imperial or metric. Right now it's at metric, back to imperial, and then you go back and hit close. To set your vehicle's odometer, you want to be in the speedometer menu and to scroll down to set odometer. Then you go down to which digit you want. So I'm going to select here, select on the joystick, and then scroll up or down to the desired number. I'm going to hit select 5, and then hit joystick again. Go to the number that you want to go to, hit select again to proceed, and then hit enter value. You have three tries to hit OK. So then once you hit three, it is set. But if you made a mistake or want to check, hit cancel. And then go back to the number that you want to make a change. And then hit on value, hit OK. But since this is a demo, I am going to hit cancel. However, you have only 500 miles to custom set your mileage. After that point, you cannot make changes. Speedometer calibration will be required for an accurate speedometer reading. You'll start off by going to speedometer in the menu, and then you will scroll down until you see speed calibration. This is where you want to drive to the beginning of your two mile distance. This could be at your driveway or elsewhere. Choose start calibration and press enter. The display will now show stop calibration. Don't press enter quite yet. Then you will want to drive two miles and come to a stop. Press enter on stop calibration. You don't have to come to a complete stop when pressing stop calibration, but it helps to ensure that you have a more accurate two mile distance. 
The more accurate your two models are, the more accurate your speedometer will be. If the speed sender or sensor is functioning and your calibration is successful, you can scroll up to back and press enter. To start or reset the trip meter, scroll down to speedometer and then scroll down and select trip A or trip B. Or you can go to reset a trip and which would be trip A reset or trip B reset. To program the fuel level resistance, scroll down and hit fuel sensor. These kits are designed for multiple factory fuel senders. Resistant ranges that are compatible are 0 to 90, 240 to 33, 73 to 10 linear, 73 to 10 nonlinear, 16 to 158, 40 to 250, and 0 to 30 ohms. If you have a fuel level sending unit other than those mentioned, you will need to change the fuel sender to one that matches any of the previous mentioned options. To make changes to your tachometer, you'll want to go to tachometer in the menu, select RPM, and this is where you can change it from 8,000 or 10,000 RPMs. Once it's selected, go back to the menu. And then in the same one, you go to pulse calibration. From here, you can select through 0.5 to 6 pulses per revolution. The pulse count typically equals half of the cylinders on your vehicle. So if you have a V6, you typically have three pulses. V8s typically has four, and so on. You can change the visible warning for fuel level, oil pressure, water temperature, and voltmeter. To change the warning set point, you will be doing this by simply selecting one of the four sensors. Right now, I'll be using the oil pressure as an example. You can disable any or all gauges or continue to scroll down to the desired pressure so the sensor can release a warning once it reaches that specific level. For the audible warnings, scroll down until you see systems in the menu page. You can change it, select it, and scroll down to the bottom to see audible warnings. You can change it to either on or off depending on your preference. Changing the time is very similar to changing the odometer. Scroll down to the third half of the menu and select time. You can either have the 12 or 24 hour clock. For this demonstration, I will select the 12 hour mode. Once the mode is selected, go down to where it shows the time. I want to start off with the hour by scrolling until I see it highlighted. This does not mean it will change until I select it with the joystick. Once it is selected, it allows me to go clockwise to increase the number or counterclockwise to decrease the number. Lastly, to change the level of brightness, the level of brightness will change depending on the day. You can make the screen brighter during the day and dim at night, or even make them both the same. Let's say that you want to make the daytime brighter and nighttime dimmer. We can scroll down until the daytime option is highlighted and then select it. Then move the joystick from clockwise and counterclockwise until you're comfortable with the brightness. Once you're happy with the daytime brightness, just push the joystick and scroll down to the nighttime to make it brighter. Mm -hmm.